Lemon Amiga present. A play diet video review. Sit back and get tired of show. Hi, welcome to another Lemon Amiga game guide and review. This time we'll be taking a look at the 1991 game Captain Planet, distributed through Mindscape and distributed also through the Amiga Cartoon Classics pack. So let's jump on into this game and check it out. The game lets you skip levels right from the go, so let's just select level 1 first of all and play this through. Uh, Captain Planet and the Planeteers uh, is based on the uh, children's cartoon show from the early 90s, the same name. And in this game we get to play Captain Planet himself later on and um, one of his five eco-warrior followers uh, known as the Planeteers. In this first level we get to play as Wheeler and his special ability is Fire, which you can use to destroy blocks and enemies and you'll find uh, you can also use Mario skills on these blocks to uh, gain extra bonuses and you might notice straight away destroying the enemies uh, will leave a ghost behind which will follow you around and those ghost icons will give you uh, a bonus uh, times the number of ghosts that you have and uh, they will certainly mount up the score uh, as we shall see later on uh, so this first level starts off pretty easy, all we have to do is discover these hidden bonuses along the way and while we are destroying these nuclear blocks, uh, nuclear waste on this first level and the game operates almost like a Turrican style uh, side-scrolling platformer um, without perhaps many of Turrican's special features, you will get a surround laser on this but what you do get is uh, quite a, a, an enjoyable, easy first level. So the theme of this game is largely based on uh, ecology and as an ecologically minded superhero uh, your job is often to get rid of uh, nuclear devices and uh, to also rescue polar bears and seals, dolphins and that kind of thing, uh, elephants later on. Um, on this first level as I say, it starts the player off pretty easily, just removing these blocks, either by blowing those things away or headbutting the, the green and the red blocks. And as we move along there with our uh, friends behind us, uh, we will get rid of the last enemy in that part of the uh, level, remembering, of course, to dodge those. Uh, whatever they are, spinning spike things that the enemies fire uh, they will disappear after a certain length of time which uh, is often at random uh, so it's best to avoid those as much as possible and let's get all these hidden bonuses uh, on our way towards extra lives and that kind of thing uh, and it can be tricky sometimes figuring out uh, a route on this game uh, particularly if you want to find and uh, collect all these hidden bonuses so let's just try and get that middle one it's not particularly easy uh, you'll find the player's controls on this game are uh, average to say the least uh, the player cannot uh, fire while jumping they cannot uh, turn around while firing while jumping and jumping, uh, turn in the air and that kind of thing um, as players uh, may have come to expect uh, when you press up on the joystick the player will leap at a set distance and once the player memorizes that set distance it's not really hard to, uh, to progress through the game some bonuses like that one are notoriously impossible to get I'm not sure how to get that one but that's the first section of level 1 complete 
The second section involves that spacecraft uh, up there in the corner, which will be protected until we clear all those nuclear devices. And if we should make a mistake on this level, we can simply press fire to instigate the special rescue uh, weapon. In this case, it's a balloon, and that will uh, reset the player back to the last platform they happen to be standing upon. And on level two, the player can slide down icy slopes, and uh, on the third level, they can uh, instigate uh, a cushion of air to, to save them from falling. So that is definitely a good uh, aspect of the game. That, uh, it will rescue the player. Uh, which is unique, really, I have to say. And then we move on to another section. This is a, a shoot 'em up kind of a section where we have to destroy all these flying menaces, which will uh, fire uh, toxic gas, which will deplete the ozone layer. So by popping those out of the sky, we can collect the parachuting enemies, and that will give us a follower uh, to obviously give us more bonus score. Every time we collect those uh, dropping uh, acid drops there, we will get uh, a bonus. So let's shoot all the enemies and collect those bonuses. I have to say, I, I like the way this craft handles and moves around the space. Uh, the game does have a, a level of inertia on this uh, flying section, so you can't expect the craft to stop on the spot without some kind of sliding going on but um, now we have uh, 10 followers that's the maximum we can have um, and uh, the number is going down it's important to clear all these guys before we move on to the next section of the level and we can fire whilst turning on this section I think so let's just get rid of the last few and fly around just to make sure we've cleared all those before we go on to the third and final section of this level one. So already the player might be able to discern there are more than one objective per level uh, and on this level there are three objectives. Uh, the final objective is to rescue a number of polar bears uh, by repairing holes in the ozone layer. We can do like this. Uh, this pipe will eject uh, ozone and we can just drop that onto those uh, holes and I'm just going to speed this game up a little bit just to show you that process and there will be uh, a counter in the corner which you can see under the score in the top left hand corner that will go down as you repair those holes and then by touching these polar bears um, you might notice on the introduction screen to this level it says rescue the seals uh, and I suppose you could say these are seals but to me they look, look more like polar bears particularly because the sign indicates you must rescue these by returning them to the North Pole so let's keep on uh, prompting these polar bears along the level and get them all moving there at the same time and uh, there are three on this section and there you go he will move off to the North Pole and then just get these two moving along one of them's made it and that's the other two so once one of those polar bears reaches the exit uh, you will gain the super bonus of a thousand points times your number of followers and I have ten so that's ten thousand points which gives me another life uh, you will get another life for every hundred thousand points in the game which is great and uh, I'll also get another life there for completing that section. On to level 2. Uh, this time we play as GI and she can use her magic water weapon which will freeze and she can use this as an extra platform. So let's just block off that thing which fires fireballs and try and freeze this enemy by uh, Popping those things, bubble bobble style, we can uh, collect those followers for the bonus. And this uh, level in particular does remind me of Rainbow Islands. Uh, instead of rainbows, uh, we can climb using these platforms and pop those things uh, like bubble bobble and get onto the next section, which is the submarine. 
So I'm showing you the easy way to complete this level. Um, what the player must do to complete the level for maximum bonus is to go directly upwards from the start and you will find a number of columns containing lots of enemies. On the top of those columns you will find a block and you must hit that block on the left hand side uh, to release that and then drop all the way down, climb up to the next column, release that block. Drop all the way down, climb up to the next column, release that block from the left hand side. And what that will do is that will create uh, the means to uh, set a water tap uh, off and that will flow into this lake which we are in at the moment and then we can later release some dolphins uh, which will swim along that water and plunge into this lake a super bonus and the other super bonus is gained by dropping these toxic barrels into the recycler there the water will go a shade uh, bluer and that will uh, indicate the water has now cleared uh, there are about five barrels on this section which you must uh, navigate into the recycler and pack to there to crush those so let's at least get two well <laughs> let's not bother actually that, that's a, a bug in the game uh, actually let's go back and correct that uh, let's get two of those it isn't necessary to complete any of these uh, missions on this level uh, and as we shall see later going the easy way that uh, just highlights that fact uh, because we will not complete any missions on this level we will just get to the exit so these are the blocks I'm talking about you must hit those from the left to uh, create a watertight barrier and because we are about to hit those things from the right that will uh, mean that uh, part of the game isn't possible. Uh, let's just get rid of that. There. We can also rescue these fish as well. If we climb up to that platform, diagonal down, we can rescue the fish from the bonus. I'm going to rescue these dolphins here by setting them free, and they will not swim down to the lake because I'm doing this the quick and easy way. What they will do is die, but they will still allow you to complete the level. So let's jump up, get those things, collect the enemies, free the dolphin, and the same again. Jump up, get rid of those, get the enemies, which aren't always easy. In fact, I can't collect those, so I'll have to let those uh, find me and free the dolphin. And that will illuminate the exit. So the tap you can see in the top left hand corner is the one you need to buy a special weapon into and that will trigger the, the water to flow but I've ruined my chances of doing that so let's get down there and find the exit by going the easy way to complete this level, the quick way it has to be said uh, you will still find these columns but this time you'll just have to slip down there on the old drain pipe and that will take us right to the bottom of the level avoiding all these enemies so that's terrific if you are quick and keen with the fire button you might be able to uh, capture most of those enemies on the way down I'm just going to slide my way into the exit onto level 3 and on level 3 we play as Matai who, uh, whose special weapon is love and you can fire hearts into objects to kill them and also to grow these vines to navigate around the level so let's just get rid of that whatever that is uh, from some kind of nuclear power station you know, in this game and grow those vines to access more of those uh, things uh, you can see I have full lives there judging by the looks like the uh, looks like the ring pulls actually under the score but it doesn't uh, take very long to acquire full lives on this game uh, as long as you don't die obviously so by climbing this it allows me to get to that second uh, smoking chimney there and the enemies on this game will eat away at the vines so it's uh, oh, died there it is possible to save yourself as I say by um, jumping down and it will create a love cushion which we can float down on enemy there eats the vines and the bird drops the enemy onto our uh, nearest location so it is possible to avoid those the bird drops those enemies onto our heads 
but definitely the broods. You have to watch out for them. And uh, having eaten away all the vines, we'll have to grow them again to climb the first section of this level, uh, which can take time, obviously. Uh, things do. And then let's get up there and see what there is. The uh, player can just uh, move directly across on that um, uh, ladder and avoid the enemies. That's particularly one aspect of this level. You have to avoid the enemies so many times and then regrow the vines again. But of course, once you clear the enemies, they die and they stay dead. So the objective is perhaps to clear the enemies as much as possible on screen and then by the end of the level you will have uh, permanent vines which can uh, jump from one to the other, toys and like, and navigate the level that way and then the level does become a lot more accessible. So this game was coded by a certain Anthony Crowther which many people know from the 1990 game Captive, uh, the RPG which got rave reviews at the time. He started his Amiga career creating uh, Bomboozle uh, in 1988 and he went on to uh, called the Space Shooter Phobia in 1989 and it has to be said he's mostly known for his RPGs on the Amiga. After Captive he went on to create Nightmare, um, a kind of TV spin-off of the TV series in 1991 which is only very loosely based on the TV series, it has to be said. Quite a difficult game. And in 1994, he also coded Liberation uh, and the CD32 version, the RPG for the Amiga. And um, fondly remembered for those RPGs, definitely. And uh, I have to say he's also known for the music as well. And I particularly like the music in this game. Every level to me has quite funky music and that's certainly an aspect of the game I enjoy as well as those great graphics. You can see the detail on these levels even though I've blown this screen up to one and a half times the screen of the native Amiga. Um, in, in an Amiga native screen resolution you can see all these tiny boulders in the background and all the level detail there. Uh, the characters themselves are well drawn uh, and nicely animated. Um, nice jumping mechanism there. Uh, so the graphics uh, in this game were created by Jason Kingsley who started out working for DeMarc on the Amiga uh, making the graphics for Trivial Pursuit the Genesis edition in 1986. Uh, he moved over to the Hunt for Red October uh, the strategy game, not the movie tie-in, but the strategy game in 1987 and uh, Better Dead Than Alien uh, was a Space Invader clone he made the graphics for in 1988 uh, and something called Blade Warrior which was a quite poorly received uh, Image Works publication in 1989 uh, before making Captain Planet in 1991 so as I say I particularly like these graphics even blown up the background details still managed to shine through and they really do look high res uh, in native Amiga resolution and you can't see at the moment but particularly on the flying level the copper backgrounds on this game really really good you cannot tell you cannot see a line of difference between the various shades of blue on the on the backgrounds it's so fine uh, thanks to the ECS modes um, I particularly like that but there are many things to like about this game and many things to dislike about this game. Um, I like the fact that the player often gets rescued either through their own efforts or when they die they will materialise next to uh, somewhere near th where they left off. And that's a great feature. It doesn't send the player all the way back to the beginning and it doesn't require any uh, restart tokens or anything like that to be picked up. As I say, the cartoon graphics and the colourful levels, I appreciate those. The, uh, the copper backgrounds, the upbeat music. Uh, the puzzles, on the other hand, can be said to be quite difficult. And it took me quite a while to learn how to do this uh, level. And I have to admit, I did have to rely on long plays, actually, to give me some idea of the level design. 
and you could argue that the levels could have been designed better. Uh, for example, on level 2 it isn't clear that you're supposed to release those water blocks in a certain order and it might have been a good idea to blank off the level uh, to make the, uh, the player uh, do those in the correct order. Although having said that, the levels are pretty open. It's a pretty open map so they're not particularly linear. So you can't argue that that's uh, a fault with the game. You can do puzzles in any order, and as I showed you on level 2, you don't even have to do the puzzles. You just have to get from A to B, and that's often enough. So on this level, um, I've reached the, uh, the right-hand side of the screen there, and we can grow vines uh, horizontally and vertically. And let's just get rid of those uh, last few electricity-generating uh, stacks of horrible waste and get to the top of the level to get to the third section. Uh, so uh, yeah, pros and cons. So you can't jump uh, and turn in mid-air, you can't duck or crouch, there's no invincibility or tokens like that, there's no power-ups. Uh, but it would be very easy to criticise things that this game doesn't have. I mean, you know, uh, just because it isn't included in the game isn't necessarily a negative feature it's just that it's not in the game you know you could argue that the game would have benefited from uh, a target site in the shoot em up levels and you know different bits and pieces that the game doesn't have but you know it doesn't have those so it doesn't have them uh, i will say jumping is rather slow to be honest uh, and it takes quite a getting used to um, some of the jumps require pixel perfect jumping so uh, sometimes the jumping arc is a little weird to get used to and uh, as I say the, the jumping is certainly not as fast and nimble as the Turrican games for example and uh, not even as fast jumping as maybe Mario uh, but uh, as I say some of these puzzles can be quite difficult look at this one I can't get to that vine and uh, it's difficult enough with that uh, electricity there uh, falling onto our heads but if we, if we fall down and climb down onto that thing somehow like this we can grow the vine and that will allow us to grow the vine uh, horizontally there by standing on top of that and again it's difficult with the birds dropping enemies on our heads and electricity and that kind of thing everywhere you have to avoid those and uh, let's just go all the way back to the side of the level again and trigger off a vine that I forgot to mention earlier on and again it's, it, the, these puzzles really do take some working out and the length of the game is also massive you can spend however many of time you like on these levels there are no time limits which to me is a great point certainly saved games like Robocord and things like that there are no time li limits so you can spend maybe two hours on the inside, maybe four hours on the outside completing this game. I've been known to spend two hours doing the, the first five characters, of which this is number three of course. Uh, I've spent two hours playing the first five characters and then another hour on top of that playing the last level. So by that time the player's reflexes and concentration has waned they are pretty damn bored with the game by then and then they make stupid mistakes and one aspect of the game is once you start making stupid mistakes um, well you lose concentration and that's it you lose life after life after life you can with concentration build up a number of lives particularly have a number of followers behind you but as soon as you die you'll lose the followers uh, as you can see I have zero at the moment oh, I've just got one there for that bonus and there are always hidden little bits like flowers in the background there I can select for uh, extra bonuses which will trigger those followers and I suppose the following aspect for a times 10 bonus that really is uh, yet another unique feature of this game I can't recall any other game we have uh, following ghosts behind you which give you uh, uh, multiple uh, bonuses um, perhaps collecting things and being gained uh, tokens is the usual aspect but uh, yeah so after that 
I'll just mention the scores. Uh, this game received 43% in Amiga Power issue 8 in December 1991, and another 43% in Amiga format issue 30. Uh, main criticisms were the puzzles and the collision detection, which I don't have a problem with, to be honest. If you don't touch the enemies, you won't die, and uh, you can rescue falls and that kind of thing. Uh, so I haven't got a problem with the collision detection. Uh, it gained 77% in Amiga Action, which is a bit more like it. Uh, I'd probably give this game between 70 and 75%. Uh, certainly the graphics are well done and the sound. Uh, as I said, the main character could have been tweaked and these pixel perfect jumps there, particularly that one, just see me jump over the gap really really difficult and it's so easy to fall to your doom as well but as I say 75% is a good score for this game and European magazines such as Generation 4 actually gave this a 91% which is very generous indeed um, the, case, the game can be frustrating and I have been known to wander around the, these levels particularly this one fruitlessly to get to places but again, it's pros and cons. The, the game does allow you to skip levels. You can go to level 2 from the start. And you can select uh, 2 or 3 once you've done any one of the levels. And uh, so the player does get to leap ahead in levels should they choose to do so. Uh, there are no password systems. And the player does get continued, but as I say, the player can get so bored with the length of this game, uh, the player <laughs> is reluctant to even go through those continues. But still, I think maybe a password system would have benefited this game, some kind of restart point with the length of these levels. So, hopefully I should be getting through perhaps uh, one of the hardest levels in this game. So I'll get this vine, the one that I didn't get earlier on to get to the exit and again as I say to get to the third part of this level grow that thing up there and then see how much we've got to do to get there and we'll just speed that up just to make that process a bit quicker uh, this game probably took me two hours something like that over two hours probably to complete and I'll be using multiple run throughs actually uh, you'll see I'm down to three lives on this particular level so let's go the easy way to the top of the, uh, the very top of the screen and the play area is very large it has to be said uh, adequate certainly adequate enough for this game so let's avoid those jump across jump on the vine that we've spawned and that will allow access to the very top let's get rid of that and that should uh, clear the bar, the uh, the process bar there under the uh, lives meter. Oh, that was a bit rash. Let's try that again. As I say, it doesn't respawn you very far away from your death point. So let's get those lilies. And above there we can see the elephants, which we should rescue on the next part. Let's just get over there. Impatient to get to those elephants now by running along and jumping over those guys. And in order to rescue those elephants, we must make use of this handy dandy helicopter and reach down and grab those and we must take those to an elephant sanctuary uh, later down the level. So this is me attempting to do that for another super bonus. If you have any followers behind you when you reach those elephants, oh, just touch the ceiling there. Collision detection is spot on, you can't avoid the... Oh, spot on there you can't you can't touch anything or you will die let's go back and try that again yeah if you have any followers uh, when you release those elephants they will give you the multiple bonus uh, so that's one tip to remember if you manage to get the followers on this section and this is me rescuing the last elephant on a subsequent playthrough and you might notice the, the mouse pointer there in the center of the screen we'll get rid of that in a moment but let's try and Let's try and manoeuvre our elephant there, that's in, in the sanctuary for a thousand points. And avoid those things, oh, got me again. You can't avoid those lasers, no problems with that. If you're under those beams, you've had it. And let's exit that level. 
So you don't have to rescue all those elephants. You can, if you drop them by mistake or otherwise let them go, uh, they will be destroyed and that will open the exit to get to level four. So let's get rid of that mouth pointer and get the bomb. On this level, we play as a character known as Linker and she has the special ability of using wind to remove these uh, coke cans and uh, triggering those uh, bonuses there and you might notice wind yes subtle gag there it actually comes out of a rear end and that enables it to fly and to uh, traverse the level through flight so let's get rid of all these coke cans for the first of our super bonuses there three thousand and uh, by having followers on these levels it really does give you uh, bonuses are plenty when you trigger those uh, uh, torches. Uh, very difficult to get through this first electrical uh, trap, but having done so and uh, with a good timed effort, you can then get rid of our friend the nuclear block, nuclear barrel, whatever they are, and to get through to this section and accrue more of those followers, which it has to be said is the best thing about the, the, this game getting lots and lots of followers so it can be difficult to instigate the flight maneuver I have to say on this level you have to fall down um, and then uh, push up to, to fly and you have to fall down from a certain distance so it often requires uh, very uh, tricky launch techniques to get the player to fly and I have known myself to get stuck on this level being unable to fly uh, for whatever reason so that's not particularly well done but apart from that if you do manage to find uh, a decent drop you can then fly using your wind power fire power and that will get you through the level so you might notice i removed a couple of those blocks there on the right and that enables me to go under that electrical trap and remove those to progress through the level and again it, it's it's not the puzzles it's the way it's the order that you do them in that's the main thing uh, the puzzles are difficult until you know how they are done and then they are fairly easy after that it's just remembering the order so just drop through there get rid of that thing very lucky actually to uh, avoid that en enemy fire and drop through these things you must, uh, the easiest way to get through this level actually is to go above where I'm going there with those uh, Egyptian dog mummy things or firing the lasers. If you go above there you will collect all the followers that you need and by destroying uh, uh, a large number of nuclear barrels you will gain times 10 bonus and if you clear all those nuclear barrels they will give you the super bonus and uh, you can collect the super bonus at least twice, maybe three times if you carry on above that section and go, well, virtually north, I, I suppose you could say, and clear all those so that you have plenty of lives and plenty of energy, plenty of score, it has to be said, by the time you get to this section, which isn't easy at all. How are you supposed to get rid of this? I have no idea. So let's avoid it. Uh, doing well, actually, to avoid those things. Uh, you must have to push it into uh, the push it into you know this side of the screen somehow. Anyway, let's just get those torches and reveal the second section of this game. If we're calling the nuclear barrels that we haven't seen the first section, the second section uh, involves a submarine. If we can get there and just get rid of those baddies and this sphinx-like creature making life difficult and it's got me so let's try that again and look at that I've respawned directly over the thing so that doesn't help sometimes the respawns are good sometimes they're not it can be pretty damn close to where you died or it can be right on top of the enemy you can't always tell but there you go and we enter the second section the submarine so the diversity on these levels is pretty well done, shoot em ups and helicopters and submarines and that kind of thing although it has to be said this is very difficult to get into you have to time that jump in between the uh, the dog gods fire there whatever that thing is 
and if you do that you can jump behind it and get rid of that thing like this and then you should well I should have stayed in the corner there and got rid of the sphinx but I didn't but when you jump back up you can fly over it hopefully let's just be brave judge those things let's get out there oh died but luckily it got rid of the enemy for me and that's it down to two lives that aspect of the game is definitely one of the downsides once you start losing lives they just seem to disappear and I'm up to three again so if I'd had lots of followers at this time uh, destroying these bombs will give me the super bonus a thousand points each and that times by your followers so uh, as I say, if I'd have done the barrel section of the nuclear thing first, I might have had followers by this time, but not if not if I'm dying as much as I am doing, to be honest. And this is very tricky. You have to follow this water, and the currents and the water will blow you around. Uh, but you should find the, uh, the rock there, uh, which got blown to the section through the currents. And there's probably six... Uh, dynamite uh, traps there for you to explore and explode on this level very very difficult it requires patience galore it has to be said uh, to get those things and if they collide with the scenery you will die uh, sometimes the, uh, the thing will, will be dropped uh, I'll have to pick that up again there sometimes it, it will be dropped but uh, most times if uh, if the, uh, the stone hits the scenery you will die as well and if you did collect the followers this is a, a, a restart from a save if you did manage to collect the followers you should be looking at a game such as this and having lots of followers to destroy these uh, these traps here should give you lots and lots of lives so let's just get rid of the last one for the last super bonus and on with the game so that was the last one there are as I say there are about six it's very long and boring. By this time, the player hasn't got hardly any concentration left to be even be bothered with that kind of thing. Hence the restarts and that kind of thing. So definitely a major criticism of this game is it just gets harder and harder and harder. Uh, which, you know, you could be said it could be a good thing to keep momentum going. But to me, it's not really that, that, that good. And it just continues. There are more sticks of dynamite to get through to clear on this section which I've cleared already uh, so let's get back and find the exit uh, there are lots and lots of dynamite to clear on this level throughout the entire thing uh, probably maybe even 15 oh that was wise probably even 15 of those things to get rid of and I've now got rid of all of those things judging by the meter under the lives bar so let's uh, reacquire the mouse pointer from the subsequent playthrough and find the exit to the level here there were dog creatures firing lasers mummies that kind of thing cut through that gap get through a few more and the left was filled with nuclear barrels that i got rid of on a previous playthrough that is very very easy that section so there's no point showing you that so once you've got rid of those screens it's on to the exit and on to the fifth and final character uh, before we move on to Captain Plant himself, here he plays uh, Kawami, whose specialty is Earth. And he can fire boulders to uh, get rid of the enemies and to get through this level. Uh, unlike all the other characters, uh, this character can't be saved in thin air by pressing fire to instigate a boulder. He'll just fall to his death. So it's more important than ever to create the platforms yourself using a boulder field and to uh, use those things to solve the puzzles. This is a particularly hard section here. Uh, if we can get through this enemy fire and get rid of that laser, we can then throw some boulders off there. And it's important to get a, a boulder on the island so that when we get down here and duck down, uh, that boulder is on the island and that allows us to jump across to the other side and get through the level. And when you die, all your boulders will disappear on the entire level. 
uh, and it's possible to, to accumulate quite a lot on the screen at the same time maybe even 50 uh, on the screen at the same time they will linger until you die uh, so hence filling these voids with boulders to allow us to get through to the next section and very very tricky to to get through there with those things let's just be brave and get in there you go and then lean off that ladder and start destructing that uh, that waste product whatever that is and there are at least maybe even 15 again of those things on this level but compared to the last level this fifth level it has to be said i find is relatively easy uh, puzzles are much easier to work out and understand in my view and it's also possible if I can do it there you go it's even possible to block the traps using those boulders so that just makes life a breeze then you've nothing to fear no time limits and you can just concentrate on getting rid of the enemies getting through the level uh, it's best to jump directly upwards off those swans and fall directly onto those if possible Get onto that, there you go. Oh, that's, that's, that's kind. It's kindly distributed beyond the other side of the, the, the level, so that requires a timely jump, which I haven't performed, and that's got to rid of all the boulders. So if I wanted to backtrack, I now can't, because that's got rid of the boulders. So let's just get through this level, get through the last one of those, and wait for it to come along before we hop down this ravine. Requires putting time of jump in there. Get rid of that thing. And on this level, it's important to block that ravine later on. Uh, and it's definitely worth remembering that, otherwise, the player won't be able to progress through the level. Such a simple mechanic there could write off the entire level, but it is possible to return down here and to re block that gap should we find it necessary later on. So at the moment I'm just trying to avoid this enemy firepower for, uh, for this particular section which can be very difficult. Ignoring these waste barrels for the moment, just trying to get rid of that enemy. Uh, oh, well that's one way to get rid of it, just land on top of that thing. And that's meant all the boulders have disappeared so that means I have to fall down there and get back down using a set of steps and re-block that gap. So puzzles such as that one could probably only be found after many repeated plays and as I say it might take the player two hours to get this far in the game so repeated plays aren't always possible especially given the lack of a password system and that's a shame because I really started to enjoy this game after I uh, started using save states to save between levels and that meant I could practice and get to know the levels and get to know the traps and to really master the, the controls which as I said particularly let the game down uh, the controls have been a bit more responsive uh, the, uh, the levels could have been uh, much easier although it would have been much easier to fall off the platforms if the controls have been too much more responsive than they are um, but uh, Having practiced this with a number of save states really brings back the, uh, this game to some kind of playability. Um, I'd say most people will be put off by the sheer size of this uh, experience and uh, perhaps when I first got this game with the Cartoon Classics pack uh, I couldn't even get off level 2 because it was so difficult to even progress. Uh, the enemies seemed very unfair and uh, the game itself was so difficult but I suppose practice makes perfect, just like everything else. And uh, only after watching uh, long plays and things like that did I really get to grips with this game. And that uh, aspect would really put off the casual player. As I say, back in the 90s I couldn't even get off level 2. So I did enjoy the first level and I certainly enjoyed the variety and, and the, the shoot em up level in the clouds there. Uh, so let's get on and clear some more of those difficult to reach barrels let's uh, uh, get rid of that one the, the, the barrels themselves uh, you have to gain some kind of height on those you can't just drop those on top of the barrels directly so let's build myself a hill out of boulders and 
drop boulder off that that, that thing, and that is constantly depleting the uh, the white line there under under the lives, which you can see on this this replay. I have full lives again. Uh, you might notice the score. Uh, maybe the highest score is round about the million mark. That's if you get around and kill everything and collect uh, everything else, uh, destroy all the enemies. Uh, which is not amazing given the, the two zeros in front of that score. There is a high score table in this game, but that will only save three scores to disc and will show three scores from the title screen. Uh, it's good that it does that, at least uh, it gives the player a sense of satisfaction when they get a higher score than previously. I always appreciate having a higher score table, although it doesn't go to the lengths of games like Bubble Bobble having 15 high scores up there, uh, and which might be a shame. So let's go to the time of the trouble, trying to uh, get through some more of this level. Look at the state of this, you know. You have to really memorise the formula on these levels, otherwise to the average player, as I say, it might be just too damn hard. And this section I'm approaching now, it is particularly tricky, so let's get rid of that one. And die! I have no idea how you're supposed to get around that puzzle. I've only figured out how to get rid of that thing by dying, so uh, there are a couple more uh, across this side of the screen. Let's see if we can work out how best to do those. And look at that, there's a boulder there. I can't fire while in mid-air, so I can't get rid of the boulder. So I have to use lateral thinking to uh, negotiate that. Let's get rid of that enemy. What a pain that enemy is. Uh, I, I don't even mind colliding with that enemy as long as he disappears. And again, I'm, I, I've lost the plot here with this, so let's go back to the... Uh, let's go back to the uh, lateral thinking and try and work out how I'm supposed to get out of this. Uh, get a boulder in there somehow, jump on top of that, and then how do you get that one again? How do you go? Oh, that's the way you get rid of that. <laughs> and try and remember it again. I had it a second ago and then I lost it and then I had it again. And get rid of a few more. And there's still more to clear after this. There's still one more in, uh, barrel above there. So shouldn't be too much of a problem except for the fact that in order to get rid of this uh, I have to create some kind of a barrier to stop those boulders going down the endless pits of death uh, otherwise the boulders will disappear and I will be unable to get rid of this trap which is again a pain in the ass on this level why couldn't they have made it a little bit easier than that but by blocking the the boulders as they uh, fall, it's now possible to uh, block in this section, block in that trap, and to use those boulders as a platform to get through this section and get rid of that enemy. Uh, so it really does help having plenty of lives on these sections and start accruing those followers again. And look at this section, by the time I reached this stage of the game, uh, I'd been playing it for far too long and I really could not remember how to get past this section. It's really difficult having the, uh, the javelin throwing thing and those uh, uh, constant firing pills there, which we can actually get rid of by blocking those, which is a handy feature, at least there is a way to destruct those. But no matter which formula, which route, which mechanism I'm using to get rid of that thing, uh, that's the way, it, it, it isn't easy. Uh, and as I say, I haven't played this level in quite some time, so it's not even easy to get out there and to get to the third section of this level just to break up the uh, the gameplay this time we uh, must rescue pit ponies using a helicopter I'll friend the helicopter if we can get through this laser field that is which is too difficult for its own good and let's get in there by avoiding this boulder we should be able to nimbly get through there with this mechanic there's a little bit of inertia on this helicopter but just enough to fly that thing around at high speed which is good uh, there is maneuverability there which helps and uh, we have to rescue these pit ponies which to me look like dogs uh, I can't imagine how they, how they could look any worse than that to be honest they, they really do look like dogs there are three of those and all I have to do is take them out of the pit 
and release those back into the wild uh, by collecting those um, with the, uh, the trusty net there and it's me collecting the third one out of the three and that should unlock the exit and again it doesn't matter whether you rescue those or whether they die in route as long as you get those out of there somehow oh killed it never mind died as long as you get those things out there that will unlock the exit and the player will be all too keen to get there by the time you reach this stage of the game so am i going to get through these am i going to manage it uh, I can tell you for a fact it's no, so let's try that again. Avoid these, this particular unnecessary laser field. Uh, that's why I'm going to give this game 70%, 73, 75. Because of those annoying things it keeps throwing in the player's way when all they want to do is get to the last level. Um, this game would have really benefited from having five levels instead of six, particularly because the sixth level is the most confusing, the most complicated, the most difficult, the most time-consuming level of the entire game. Uh, particularly from the start, the player doesn't even know how to get rid of these enemies. So, as I say, I haven't played this level in quite some time, and the wind doesn't seem to be getting rid of that enemy, even though I'm avoiding its firepower. So, uh, I'm drawn to conclude that I have the wrong weapon, and on this level we can change weapons uh, by just flying into those green weapons discs and they will swap our weapons. So let's get the uh, heart there to see if that does any better job of getting rid of those things and it does. So let's get rid of those trees, which is an irony, you're supposed to be saving trees, not blowing them up. And what over here, spiders and ghosts, maybe I can understand getting rid of ghosts um, and we, he, we see a boulder there but using that boulder to get rid of those does jack so we have to find the wind again to get rid of those nuclear boxes and as I say, it's really a confusing level uh, unless the player has played this 20 times they won't be able to progress right to the end uh, and every time they play this level they will get a little further so that's why using save states to get this far is such a wonderful thing. So now I have the wind power, which is why we'll need to uh, get rid of those uh, nuclear blocks. And by holding down fire I can swap weapons to uh, swap over to our heart to get rid of that ghost. And then swap back to the wind and get rid of those for the super bonuses. And it's particularly nice to see those 50s materialising from all our followers there. I've certainly missed that aspect, uh, having died mercilessly. And again, it requires the right combination of elements on this uh, level to progress any further. And I have to use the boulders there to get rid of those barrels blocking the way before I choose water to get rid of those fire jets. And we can now switch to the heart and get rid of the enemy. So I definitely recommend keeping the heart as the backup weapon on this level because that gets rid of the enemies and simply using the first slot as uh, a swapping mechanism to swap uh, the primary weapon which gets rid of uh, whatever's blocking our way. So we've just used the fire to get through those uh, barriers and now we need to find the boulder again to get rid of the next uh, barrier which is the uh, collapsible floor maintaining the heart as I say is the backup weapon just in case there are any enemies that we need to get rid of but that just highlights another fatal flaw in this final level the fact that the player has to backtrack endlessly to uh, go back and uh, get those special weapons just to get rid of the next thing blocking our way so we can see the nuclear barrels so we know that we need wind and it's over there so we need to go back and find it so again, it's a case of backtracking endlessly to get the right combination if we should figure out the right combination in the first place. Um, on that section of the game, um, I uh, where am I going now? What am I doing? I'm getting I'm getting fire there for some reason. I don't quite know why. Maybe I expected a a barrier to materialize before I got to where I was going but the important thing is to have this wind here and then we can soak up those extra bonuses and we will gain extra lives as well 
by doing that. Uh, we can gain extra lives on this level just about, uh, but colliding with all these enemies is so easy, it's, it's unbelievable. So let's go all the way back there and get the boulder, which we'll need to destroy the laser cannons and go all the way back. So it's in the heart as well to get rid of that spider. So laser cannons, avoid the uh, the drops of water, which I don't think you can kill on this level. And then run and gun, try and get rid of those laser cannons. So in conclusion then, uh, I find that level one is very enjoyable even for the average player and I like the fact that there's variety on offer with the shoot em up level but after level 2 the game gets too complex for its own good the levels are large and sprawling sometimes the puzzles aren't obvious and certainly not particularly easy there are many many enemies many many ways to die and uh, there are no invulnerabilities or tokens to speed the game up or spice the game up in any way so there are just as many pros as cons in this game really hence the uh, the low scores in many reviews but I find this game has its own character and for some reason I keep coming back to this game again and again and again just to play through these levels uh, especially with the save states you can use to skip levels um, so I do find this game has got charm of its own I don't know why maybe that's just me but I rate this game higher than most people apart from the fact that it's just too damn long you have failed the earth has fallen to the power of the eco villains oh dear i didn't get to face duke nukem uh, a questionably named arch enemy duke nukem considering the fact that duke nukem had already been released on the pc uh, the original duke nukem one anyway there you go that's me that's a new high score thank you for viewing captain planet